Go. Hi. Right. <laughs> pull up, pull up. July 1st, 5 p.m. Welcome to the first meeting of the month. Mind you, Township Board of Trustees. Um, inspectors <laughs> often having trouble over there. Uh, three trustees. Too early in the month. <laughs> Fire Chief, Road Administrator, Fiscal Officer, a member of the Fifth Estate, Fourth Estate, one of those estates. Uh, welcome everyone. Okay, let's get started. I would entertain a motion to adopt the minutes of June 17th, 2019. Is there a motion? I would move adoption of the minutes as, with correction noted, you had a and a name correction, yes. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And I will say. Moving mm, secondly for the discussion, hearing none, may we vote please. Thank you for the correction. You're welcome. Um, Mr. Hollister? Yes. Mr. Meacher? Yes. Mr. Crockett? Yes. <clears throat> now I entertain a motion to approve payment of the bills $52,274.30. Broken down journal fund $6,282.49. Fire fund $28,000. $42.21, cemetery $88.28, EMS billing $88, excuse me, $8,877.67, road bridge $3,483.73, capital project um, $5,500 even. Is there a motion? I will make that motion. Is there a second? I will second. The motion is second. Is there any discussion regarding payment of those accounts? I have one. Discussion? Discussion. Uh, I have a past due notice from Idville, Idleville, something or another, from printer that Denny ordered, and there does appear to be a $23.85 tax charge on it. Bastards. <laughs> thought maybe we could redo that. Sure. Yes, because we'll take, we're taxing. Yes, the fire department will take care of that. The fire department will take care of that. <laughs> <laughs> Alrighty. Any other discussion regarding payment of those accounts? Hearing none, may we vote, please. Mr. Meacher? Yes. Mr. Crockett? Yes. Mr. Hollister? Yes. Correspondence for the period. We have a uh, note from Sunrise Cooperative. We have a League of Women Voters uh, monthly uh, newsletter. We have a Rails to Trails magazine that was available at the Master Trails meeting last week. We have a uh, issue of Cemetery and Cremation magazine uh, for the month of um, June. That goes to Sunrise. We have a notice from Miller Pipeline, Miller Pipeline about the work that's going on as we speak. Uh, we have a, a thank you um, letter from the uh, uh, President of the uh, Arts Council for our uh, contribution to the Wheeling Column Memorial. Um, we have a letter from uh, Gina Marie Cox our executive director of Community Foundation regarding a project she and I are investigating about, and we talked about the last meeting, about uh, subsidizing to a certain extent um, residents of need yet to be determined outside of the municipal boundaries of Pinello Springs uh, for a swimming pool lessons, swimming lessons in the pool. Uh, it's a lot of information that has to be uh, gathered before much work on that's going to happen. Uh, a, me a message from, um, let's see, Devin Shoemaker, Green County Regional Planning, about a, another solar meeting that's coming up um, July 19th at uh, 6.30 p.m. at the Cedar Cliff High School in Cedarville. Is, that, is this the same group that did the last meeting? I, 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 it sounds like the same group, but it's signed by a different person, and it's a different location. And it's gone through regional planning. Is. Yeah. Oh, anyway. Okay. I, I get the feeling it's the same group, unless it's the group on the other side of the issue. I don't know. <laughs> That's, I doubt that, but who knows? Um, some emails about the YSCDC uh, formation group. We might talk about those later on, about what's going on. Uh, senior notes from the Senior Citizens Center. Um, I'm, so 
somebody's got to take two gallons. Those all came in the same envelope. They did? Yeah. So, um, the Green County Public Health Special Meeting? Oh wait, no. What are you looking at? Draft resolution for proclamation. Oh no, that, yeah, that was not, that's not. That's supposed to be solo. Okay. That, that's, it was a such a Green County Health Advisory Green People's Pile. Is that what that is? Yeah. Well, there's yeah. There's also a draft resolution from Little Miami uh, Inc. Yeah. I think. Mm-hmm. Well, no, it's it's um. Oh, the River Cleaners. Yeah. Uh, we'll look at that under new business. And then we have a legislative alert from uh, Ohio Township Association uh, about mainly about the state budget, which is uh, has a continuing resolution for two weeks to try and hammer out the budget. We have uh, an update from the uh, Green County Public Health regarding their most recent uh, public meeting. We have a citizens advisory about uh, bio bio storage bio solid storage. Uh, in Green County, probably the Bath Township facility. There, what they there was about? a hearing and it's already passed. Or? About the digester? Uh, Thursday, June 27th. Yeah. Hmm. Well, but we received it. Yeah. yeah we did. We received it. I'm just the question is, what, out. isn't it advisory? It was like a announcement of a meeting or something. Oh, this, it's from the it is a citizen advisory from the Ohio EPA mm -hmm. regarding the meeting that was set for the 27th. Uh, a uh, information from uh, Miami Valley Regional Planning regarding a the release of the annual report from MVRPC, which was released uh, recently and is available online. So we didn't get a paper copy of that. Um, agenda and information regarding the uh, Regional Planning Executive Committee meeting that was held last week uh, regarding upcoming. Uh, uh, oh, no, I'm sorry, that was the regarding the, the meeting that was held the full board last week. Um, more information about the, uh, the conference call that we had with them, BRPR and NPRP, so MSA and WTC uh, last uh, last Wednesday. There were quite a few things. Yeah. We might talk about that later in the fire department uh, or fire station update. A, a form letter from Reverend Eckler, uh, uh, a copy of some emails back and forth with Wendy French of the oh, uh, Burnham and Flower, the Otarma group, about a um, policy, a, a builder's risk policy that we need to get um, in place before the work start, the work begins. It's basically your liability type of insurance in case, you know, one of the builders hits a gas line and boom, goes the fire station. That's, that's not their liability. <laughs> no, that's not their liability, but it would be for somebody who's doing site prep or... Uh, somebody that we employ. Mm -hmm. right. So, I'm trying to put that together. The chief gave me uh, all kinds of information, helpful information. Uh, who that policy? <laughs> who, who, who needs to be covered and who doesn't know? <laughs> no, I got to know that there's a 50 foot away is a fire hydrant. That's that's the information that's from the pretty much <laughs> extent of what I can figure out from that thing. But, oh, I, I, just, I, I put just, the address down too, so oh, I, 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 that. I got that. So I think maybe it was the first thing you heard. What is the Sunrise Cooperative? There was this it's a it's a it's truck gasoline and, and uh, diesel fuel thing. Landmark. It, oh, it's the landmark. Okay, got it. Down, et That's just the name. Sounds like a 1960s rocker, doesn't it? <laughs> <laughs> and then I have uh, one last uh, email from MSA about we have a what's called a page turner scheduled for tomorrow at uh, at uh, one. Noon. Does it do or what? It does say 1:30 on this. I thought it was what it said noon. Okay, we'll double check. Yeah, I, thought it was I, had, I had written down 130 two weeks ago. And it's going to run most of the afternoon. <laughs> Lucky us. That's, I'll bring sandwiches. That's a slow page turner. That's <laughs> a lot of pages. I, I thought the thing was like. <laughs> it's not a detective novel, huh? It's more like <laughs> War and Peace. It's not a beach read. Well, this, we anticipate this to be sort of the, oh, <clears> the, the grand finale. 
There's no, there's no end to this. Uh, it does say 130. Say a little bit more. What? <clears throat> Where does this fit in our? This is uh, kind of a final. Needs to see so. Okay. Sure. Yeah. <laughs> this is kind of a final review of the drawing before the, the bid before the bids are broken out and put together to put for the advertising for the bids. Because we're going to have nine different packages or seven mm -hmm. different packages or whatever okay. it is. And we want to make sure we're all on the same uh, all on board with the same design that this part is for the plumbing, this part is for the electrical, this part is for the for the, uh, for the structure, this part is for the site preparation. It will be a real page turner. It will be a page turner. It will be many pages. It's just to make sure that it's got sorted out properly. Mm -hmm. Because we didn't do this the first few times, this is the first time we've broken it out. And and um, so MS, or not MSA, but WDC went through the whole, all the drawings after they were changed from all the value engineering changes that we made, and we did the drawing, and we did the specifications, although we're only going through the drawings tomorrow, not the specifications, um, and, and we did those, and then WTC took those drawings and is in the process of marking them up to break them up for all the different packages, and that's what we're going to go over tomorrow. Did you see the email that just came up from Christmas? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, I'm going to have to go back and you know, compare it to. We have a, a, a yeah, that's right, we did have, I thought I brought it up, maybe I did. We did have a, a very late email from uh, WTC this afternoon uh, breaking down a uh, rough cost estimate for the, for the uh, new firehouse with the changes that we have been working on uh, since our last bid uh, failure. And the estimate comes in at, uh, uh, interestingly enough, uh, about Twenty dollars under five million. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Don't get it too close. <laughs> that's get that close. I don't know. That was impressive, but that's also including the pre. I think the previous electric system. She noted in there that was the, the big base, not the smaller. Yeah, there were a bunch of little th or not little things, were things we needed to. So make it will sure. become cheaper. Oh, well, we sure. In theory, should the electric be? I mean. Well, yeah, that should save some money. Not, yeah, so not cheaper. It will come in, in on budget. Yeah, it will be cheaper than the one we couldn't afford, but now it will be one that we can afford. Less expensive. We have to let it to statue of all three of the So, <laughs> what do you mean? And it, it will still be the five million. Mm -hmm. Minus twenty dollars. <laughs> Yeah, nice. $4,999,980. Very close. Cool. Right. Uh, any further correspondence in or out for the afternoon? Hearing none, let's move to the fire department. Alrighty. This is the last meeting of the Board of Trustees. We have had 43 EMS calls, 15 fire. Incidents, and I've done four fire safety inspections. Uh, interestingly, the last two board meetings previous, we've had 43 minutes calls. So that seems to be our, <laughs> our new standard uh, two week total. Mm -hmm. uh, we have a new EMT, volunteer member Casey Brewer has passed his national register exam. Wow. Excellent. Wow. New Congratulations to Casey. Is he like the youngest member? Casey? He's pretty. Yeah, he's probably our youngest guy right now. Yeah. Cassie's not younger? No, Cassie's actually older than you. Seriously? Yeah. yeah. One's 15, the other's 15 and a half. Yeah. <laughs> no. Casey's 19 and Cassie's 21. Really? Yeah. Good for him. Yeah. Um, that bodes well for the people we've sent to this Upper Valley Medical Center in two classes. Yeah. That's really nice. Um, since the last board uh, meeting of the board of trustees, I've also spent a lot of time on the phone with Otarma uh, because we had uh, our fire engine hit the fire hydrant up front on one of our calls, so it caused a lot of damage. But we got most of it taken care of. Um, so I'm just waiting for the detailed uh, 
invoice from Dave, and then so I can submit it to uh, Detroit Tire, so I can submit it to Um I did ask about the, uh, since we have two pending claims right now, I asked if maybe we should just eat one of them ourselves so our rates won't be affected, but they said we're in a pool. It doesn't really work like the standard insurance, so we shouldn't see any change in our rates. So. I spent a lot of time in Detroit Tire. <laughs> so, yeah, everything needed tires at the same time. Um, so, yeah, the engine got two new tires in the back, but still needs two more because the opposite side were pretty crappy, too. And that was a technical term from the tire place. Um, pretty crappy? Pretty crappy. Mm -hmm. um, I wouldn't think you'd put that many miles on a tire that it would wear out. I think it's more the age. Oh, just deterioration. Yeah. Age. Yeah. Um, then I gave one needed two two new front tires, and uh, huh. and then after all this, I come the other day and Ted tells me, "Hey, come here, take a look at this." The pickup truck is sitting out there with a flat. <laughs> is that right? <laughs> You're kidding me. <laughs> so Wait, we're replacing same. everything with tank treads, so we should be fine now. This is an engine eighty one and a medic eighty one. Yeah. Okay. Oh, it's crazy. I know. An engine eighty two and a medic eighty two. Wow. <laughs> um, so anyway, who picks the numbers? Uh, it's a counting number system. Counting. Okay. Uh, Independence Day, uh, you may know, is coming up. Um, so we're <laughs> we'll be doing our usual parade action and chow fest during the fireworks. Um, we you remind me what chow fest is. Uh, it's a secret. Mm -hmm. The public would know if I said something. It's uh, since we started that. Fifteen years ago? Been a while. It coincided with your election, I think, to the Board of Trustees. So. Well, the board of 15. That was a while ago. Well, we're working on 25 then. Yeah. yeah, well, Skip Beeler was still here. So. Yeah. Uh, we have to be at the fireworks for a part of lot to be there. So we decided instead of just being there, we should have a uh, cookout. So uh, Chow Fest name came up because we had a volunteer at the time, Skip Beeler, who called it a Chow Fest. And just thought that was good, so. so this is food for the volunteers. Food for the volunteers. They can bring their uh, volunteers and take that up, and they can bring their families. families. Mm -hmm. And where is it? <laughs> up on the uh, right by the water tower. So. Oh, Mount Mount Gaunt. <laughs> and then when we've got our cruise there for fireworks. So. Uh, and Have then the cruise ever had to do anything as far as the fireworks are concerned? Um, Firewise, no. Uh, I mean they. Last year we had, well, it's mainly security because there's always some Yahoo yeah. who decides that the seven miles of fire line and police line tape do not cross does it doesn't apply to them. them. Mm -hmm. I've lived here 25 years ago, one person told us last year. Um, and it was Barbie. No. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> uh, but no, we, I mean, it's never dry enough that causes mm -hmm. a problem, which is good. And we use a good, you know, the village uses, I mean, the hot village uses a really good contract. No, I, was, I was mostly just curious. And yeah, no, we haven't had anything in a really, really long time. We have ambulance calls. There's always someone who calls, like right at the beginning oh, of the. Uh, it's a bit shocked by the first boom. I think someone just decides. I haven't called in 25 minutes, and I will call now. So, um, so yeah, um, we completed the interviews for the six candidates for the sergeant position. Final step will be next week, uh, which will be technical assessments. Goals have candidates ready to keep you guys for appointment by the July 15th. And then uh, six members completed the uh, 20 hour rope rescue operations course this weekend. Um, Jeremy Ray was the lead instructor, and he was assisted by me, Joe, and Nick. Um, and then certifies the guys to do high, both high and low angle rope rescues. Um, we benefited from partnership with the Boy Scout camp, they let us use their repelling tower on Saturday, and uh, you know, our let us use a climbing area on Sunday for the class, so worked out pretty well. We looked at bringing an outside instructor, but it was the uh, cheapest price was 2200 bucks for 20 hours, uh, so we paid out, I think, $45 in lunch meat and bread, and uh, whatever the hourly rates were for Joe and me. Less than yeah. So a lot less than what, <laughs> what the outside contractor wanted. So. Um, and that is 
that, I think. Any questions for the chief? One, I didn't bring it with me, but uh, we got a, a bill from Eamons, the um, medic, I guess, 81, uh, air conditioner went belly up. Basically an entirely brand new air conditioner at this point. Uh, yes. But one of the bills, it was for other things, oil changes, this, that, and the other thing, but it was also to, um, what do you call it, to check out the air conditioner not working said that it was blowing hot air through the vents. And blowing hot air through the vents cost us $495. It just seems to be a little pricey to put your head in the door and go, this AC ain't working, folks. <laughs> they repaired something the first time. I can't remember which one. It was an electrical issue. I think it was like 400 or something dollars. So the guys took it back and it was fine. And then after two days it was blowing out air again. We took it back and that's what it turned out to be the compressor. Um, so we had two bills of cool air conditioner. Okay, well the, the first one didn't say anything about that they did anything, that's what threw me. Yeah, I believe that um, it should be all included in there, so. Wow, it just, that's a lot. I mean, I thought about $1,800 replacement $500 two-day fix. Yeah, pretty much. That is not very happy. And part of the problem with that ambulance, see, that's the van chassis one. So anytime anything goes belly up in there, we have to take the entire inside out. It's pain in the ass. It's the one that's why we have a pickup truck chassis because I don't know John Finn always said, if you buy another van chassis, <laughs> I'll kill you. <laughs> and I'm paraphrasing, but uh, <laughs> pretty close to what he was saying about it. So Maybe now. you can ask Evans to break out that four hundred and ninety five dollars. Yep. There's no reason they should be able to tell you what yep. what you were spending that money on. Certainly. Okay. I, I think it's important that we know what we're spending money for. move to the uh, new firehouse report. We had a uh, conference call last uh, Wednesday, went over a bunch of things, uh, a bunch of things that we'd already gone over, but we were just confirming that these were things that we want to put in the final, the final bid package. Um, one was the large fan in the in the apparatus bay. Uh, there was discussion that a lot of small fans would do the trick, and the, um, the engineering people came back and said it would be more trouble than it's worth, more cost. You know, redoing, putting in insulation, you know, girders or someplace to yeah. install these things, and then all the electrical wiring for all them together, and this, that, that. So, we basically decided to. Um, put a, a big fan, not as large as the one that was originally estimated, because that was estimated for five days, but there's a there's one next size down, and I don't know if it's gone from eight feet to seven, or eight feet to six, or whatever, but so they recommend the next size down. And that's gonna go in the, the, the two bay, which has got most of the day-to-day -day equipment in it, and, um, and so it should be sized plenty for that. And then, we're going to put an alternate or another one in the three three side to see how that comes out. Yeah. They do exhaust when the engines are running? No, nope. just circular air. Just, oh, just a circular, oh, yeah. just like a, a ceiling thing. Yeah, so it's all yeah. Oh, okay. It, basically the same size as the one at the college gym. So that's going to be, uh, again, this will all be discussed tomorrow. Um, we had made, they had, there was a recommendation, and I just don't understand where it came from, as an alternate to upgrade the rear doors from the solid rear doors to match the front with all the glass. And I never remember a discussion about that, and I told them that personally, 
if we can save money anywhere, we can put it to better use someplace else than making the back doors glass. So I said, scratch that alternate. And they said, okay. I thought we'd already said no glass on the back door. We did, but somewhere they got the idea that we wanted an alternate of having all glass in the back. So I said, scratch that idea. Well, I noticed when the minutes from the meeting came through the other day and today's final, uh, it's still there, but we can take care of that tomorrow also. Yeah. Um, okay, so I'm working on the traveler's insurance. Oh, somebody, traveler's how long? Insurance? Traveler's insurance for the builder's risk. I'm sorry, oh, that's, right. who okay. gonna, that's who it's gonna underwrite it. Okay. Uh, and I was told that somebody changed me from the prevailing wage coordinator and appointed Margaret as the prevailing wage coordinator. That wasn't me. I didn't do it. it it's, <laughs> it's in the meeting notes of one of the meetings that I, I missed two of those because I was out of town. Yeah. Two of those Dan's meetings. nuts on that one because I never heard about the prevailing wage coordinator until you mentioned it to me and said that you were going to be the prevailing wage coordinator. Don't look at me. No, I know. I'm not looking at you. I'm Sorry. looking at somebody else because somebody else said either Denny or Colin told them to make Margaret. I mentioned something to Denny, and he's like, hey, well, prevailing wage coordinator is, so. <clears throat> they, they did not recommend that Margaret do it, because even though this is 21st century and 2019, sending a woman onto a construction job site and having her climb up to the top of the roof, and you, you have to. I can climb. What? You have to have them prove they have to have their wage. They have to have their wage st stub, their payroll stub, with them at all times, apparently, to prove that they were paid prevailing wage their last paycheck. Can I wait till they come down off the roof? All right, so we'll she wait. Can wait till whistle. They'll come right down. <laughs> and then you have to ridiculous. Then you have to write up. You have to write a, thing, a little thing yeah. up, and then you have to submit it to USDA or whoever the thing is, and you have to. Do this every week. I wonder why the federal government can't get it done. <laughs> and so they <laughs> said, so they said, do you want your fire department to do it? And I said, yes, I would like my fire department to do it, but I'm not sure I got the cuts to go ask my fire department <laughs> to do it. So uh, for the time being, I got the job. Okay. You can always make Alex do what you want. So. That's true. Probably good. Well, it sounds like the point is that the task. The weekly, re, you know, sampling or whatever has to be done, but it doesn't make any difference who does it. Just oh no, it just gets done. Oh yeah, it doesn't make any difference who yeah. does it, but it's just it someone responsible. responsible. There's yeah. a badge that comes with it. Oh, <laughs> oh, it's it's carrying that badge up on the roof. It's a big badge, you know, and a stick. <laughs> and we hear through the grapevine that once building starts, we better start putting on all of our correspondence that has anything to do with the firehouse. A equal opportunity funded USDA equal opportunity prevailing wage supplier person company because I guess Ashley will go through those things. We have to have a special sign too. Oh yeah, we do have to have a special sign, which, which we that they'll hold secret handshake. They can provide something. There's a special. Okay, but moving things right along. Uh, we also have to have our since we moved the tornado shelter, we have to have a third party consultant review the, the move and make sure that it complies with tornado shelter rules. So we're going back to the third party consultant and spend another $4,000 to have them look at the plans. Could I do that? A volunteer? <laughs> Are you a certified tornado shelter consultant? No. And you have to be certified by the federal government. And. Um, other than that, I would have certainly put you on that list, top of the list, as a, as a volunteer consultant. Just because you move locations, you, I mean, aren't the specs all the same, sort of like? Yeah, pretty much. But, so, 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 so for $4,000, whatever. Yeah. And, uh, let's see, there's that one, what was that one other thing? Oh. In the past, the bids went out and the contractors paid the um, paid MSA for a copy of the specifications, the bid documents, and a copy of the drawings. I don't know how much they were, but let's just pretend they were $75. Or no, let's pretend they were $150 for the contractor. That's what they paid. 
And then MSA took that money and they paid the printer and then kept the rest. Supposedly there's a tradition of marking these up. We mark everything. Yeah. Well, okay, they're not doing that this time around. Uh, the Widener's group, WDC, is, is putting these bid packages out. And of course, as you know, there's, there's nine, you know, count them up again, not seven or nine bid packages that are going out, and they're all going to have a set of drawings. So there's going to be a, lots of sets of drawings go out, and they're all going to cost, and specifications are going to cost, let's say, $150 to the contractor. Now, that $150, those checks will be made out to Miami Township, because Miami Township is the uh, responsible, we're the one who's taking responsibility for the, for, the, for the contractors now, instead of a general contractor, which we're not using. Right. And so we will take that $150 and pay this um, uh, drawing printer the $75, and we will pocket the $75 markup that we will make on it. For, for our our efforts. Party. Yeah. So Party. we had to put in a credit application to them, which Margaret did, uh, and then I forwarded it to them, and so I hadn't heard, but I guess everything's happening. So we've we got to really encourage people to buy these big packages yeah. so we can make lots of money. Yeah. Well, apparently, this bidding is not the same way that we're used to from the other two times. <coughs> The bids will go out. There will be three advertisements that bids are um, going to be available. Bid packages are going to be available on, uh, let's say, when the pre-bid meeting is. Do you remember January or July 27th? Something like right. that. Okay. Yeah. okay. The, 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 the bids July. are going to be, the bid packages, including the specs and the drawings, are going to be available on the 27th, even though it's been advertised for three weeks. You, the last time the first ad would run, somebody would see it and say, oh yeah, okay, cool. Let me call them up and I'll get the, and then start looking at them. They don't do it that way this time. Now, nobody gets a drawing, nobody gets a spec, nobody pays $150 until we have the pre-bid meeting on the 27th, where Chris Widener's, uh, Jason, estimates there may be upwards of 50 people come to that meeting looking for because then they only be bidding on one segment, right? Yeah, there may be three or four plumbers, plumbers three or four yeah. electricians, three or four contractors, three or four this, that, that. So we're going to um, try and uh, rent or get the Bryan Center gym available for that um, for that morning or mid-afternoon or whenever we decide. But we'll figure that out tomorrow when we want it, what time we want to do it. And then we'll set up bunches of tables uh, and chairs and put all the bid packages and all the bid drawings out and then these people will come and they'll say, you know, I'd like to have a set of electrical bid packages. Write us a check for the 150 bucks, I guess, and then we'll send it to them. Wow. We won't have well, We won't have packages. them on site. Right. Yeah, no, you'll we'll order them because right. you'll know exactly how many you need. Right. Well, I don't think that's good. Or it just be easier to Download their Maybe there's an electronic download. I, I don't oh, know. yeah, it just seems like such a weird, clunky. I mean, I remember, I remember them talking about it. Like, so they would go to the printer with the electronic file, but a lot of people want a, a physical copy. Right, oh, yeah, yeah. Or they don't, in their office, they can't print it out this size. They can look at it on the screen, but that doesn't work too well on the job site. So you usually have both available. So that was the long version of that, sorry. Um, and until tomorrow, that's all I have. This is not a special meeting tomorrow. This has not been publicly advertised. Uh, there will be no uh, major decisions. No votes. Yeah, there are no votes on, on whether. An information yeah. exchange. Yeah. Um, so, okay. Am I missing anything? Mm, probably not. Or probably so, but. Cemetery Sexton, Gopenhauer? That's me. Well, you know, we had our issues last Saturday, I think it was. Mm -hmm. so that's all we've had. Mm -hmm. that we, I have to meet with the lady Wednesday to purchase a natural burial space. Did you know? We did sell one last week. I sold one. Right? Yes. 
I sold a double. Yeah. And I'm going to read Lady Wednesday's body. Mm -hmm. And you'll be getting a check for either 600 or 1500 in the mail. She hasn't decided what space she wants yet. So she, she's going to send a check if she wants a natural. Mm -hmm. And then next month she's going to come back to town and we're going to meet and she's going to pick out a space. But she wants to pay now. Okay. So it reserves her. Yeah. Right. And that's why I can hold us, you know, just, oh no, I'm going to pay now. So you'll be receiving a check either for 600 or 1500 and then later on I'll give you the info to make the deed out to you. Okay. idea that I had, uh, and I think we talked about this a long time ago, but I'm going to review it, is, is uh, this is the natural burial cemetery here um, with the figure eight, which should go that way, but for some reason it's going that way. But, but I'm thinking about the, adding the uh, Oak Grove addition to the natural burial cemetery. This would be the Oak Grove addition. And what it would be, would be uh, a line of uh, white oak trees. There would be, there would be nine going this way. I didn't put all the circles in. Nine going this way of, of five, five rows. And there would be, uh, there would be a, a spot on the ground, 80 feet apart, for all 40 trees. And the 80 feet represent the, the, canopy, the canopy of a fully grown white oak tree and white oak trees will grow for 200 plus years if given enough space they get established and, 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 yeah they get established and the deer okay, them. so the idea is that we would uh, uh sell every tree or hopefully sell every tree we'd offer every tree 40 trees and with the natural burial um underneath the x and then a white oak sapling put on top of the the oh the burial spot with a plaque on every one of them and only a plaque there'd be no there'd be no tombstone or anything because over the 200 years that tree's going to grow and any stone that was there would be you know eaten up or whatever but a plaque that would say something to the effect of uh, this magnificent white oak tree um, grew 
with the nutrients of the earthly remains of John Doe, uh, <laughs> buried September 15, 19, or 2019. Okay, people have asked about having a tribute tree. You know, they wanted to put them on the natural burial, and of course they couldn't because it was prairie grass and blah, blah, blah. And some people were disappointed, and some people weren't. <laughs> but uh, I thought this was an interesting way to provide that. Now, you say to yourself, self, this is, mm -hmm. how big is this, five acres or so? We're only talking about 40 trees. 40 so months, yeah. that doesn't take very long, and now you've wasted a whole five acres. But wait a minute. You have 80, <laughs> you have 80 feet between the trees, and so you could, you know, you could, uh, we have to move this around a little bit, but the road that comes in here, the road could come in between, you know, the eight, between two trees, and then you could put a road in between the two trees, this way, this way, this way, and then have burial sites available on either side of the, of the little road. This is a big road, it should be a little road. Uh, either side of the little road, and these would be tr traditional size burial sites, not the larger 10 by 20s that we use for natural burial. And then people could be buried and have, this would be grass, it would be mown just like the, the Glen Forest up here. It would be it would be grass. It would be mowed. Uh, people could put a, a full size tombstone. You know, you know, just sort of regular, a uh, sort of a hybrid. But it would be natural burial. It would be the similar rec uh, requirements of no of everything being biodegradable, etc. It's the same thing we do now. No balls. In. What's but the size of the grave going to be? Though? Four by eight. Is that enough? I mean, do they do they have to be so far apart? No, no. They could be right that close. Yeah. Why don't you make them four by ten to allow for the head stuff? Well, <laughs> you don't want the head stuff over where things yeah. are going to sell. You don't want to put a head stuff on top of them. They're not going to know. That would leave two. <laughs> no, they're not. Oh, but we will. Well, uh, okay, well, yeah. I, I don't know. You, you guys are. I mean, that, that's it seems to work all right for traditional graves. I don't know what the difference is. Traditional graves are 10 or 12 feet long. The 14 yeah. in Clifton. They are? Mm -hmm. I thought they were 7 foot. No, no. Seven the grave space up. itself is 8 feet long. Okay, the so whole we'll make them 10 feet long. Whatever. Okay. That's, fine. That's details. But these would not be sold until every grave site is sold in the, in the natural area that we have now. Because, it, well, I'm, I'm sorry, we, we could start once the ground is prepped in the little pads are put in, et cetera, et cetera. We could start selling trees anytime. People could, could buy a tree. But would not be able to buy a grave site in this section until all of these, until this one is full. Obviously because these are larger, they're gonna cost more than, than these are, and you would then start selling these you know, faster than you start selling these. So this is a plan for, of course, long, long into the future. And they don't want the, the urns that the tree grows out of no. This is going to be provided by us. We will provide the white oak sapling, okay. we will plant it, and we'll take care of it, and we'll put the netting around it so the deer doesn't come and eat it. Um, which they will do. Which they will, they will do. Mm -hmm. But, uh, you know, they grow somewhere. Yes, sir. What about the spread of oak wilt? <laughs> but the spread of oak wilt? It's, there's fear of our losing oak the trees the way we've lost ash trees and chestnuts. And Mm -hmm. um, working on this. So I'm wondering if each one yeah. a shot of focal vaccination. And, and that may be feasible. <laughs> what would, would there be a reason no, not I to have, have a, a variation, variation of species? Not just oaks? But. In, in my mind, I like the idea of it being oak grove. I like the idea of, of them being all the same, you know, so they could, so it would represent, you know, Something <laughs> represent the, the you know the, the lifetime of the individual who's there and the lifetime of the tree above it. And oaks, of course, are one of the longest growing trees there mm -hmm. are. Mm -hmm. I, I love that. Except we okay. have this history of entire species being knocked out. Putting all your eggs in the basket. Well, we would uh, investigate this. Mm -hmm. To see whether this is a feasible plan. 
Because if they can't live for a couple of hundred years, they're not good in my book. I want long, I want a long tradition of, of the burial of you know, people. It's a combination. I mean, hickory I trees mean, live that long, but they're I, not as decorative. There are fungicides that are used to prevent. Yeah. Oh, well, in which case, in the 200 years, years, we'll have to be on it. In 200 years, uh, uh, the aliens will come down and they'll probably be. <laughs> They're already oh, here. No, the, 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 the harder, I like the concept. <laughs> the harder part of this is nurturing those trees until they can live on their own. Yeah. That's a, that's a big commitment. Mm -hmm. Well, there won't be, you know, there'll be just a couple here. Is, a couple is that mainly a protecting them from the deer? I mean, and, and I mean, you have to very carefully keep other things from growing around them. You know, you can't go and burn the berry anymore. Now that you've got trees, well, yeah. it's going to be mowed. It's going to be. Is going to have to mow? Yeah. Be yeah. This right? is going to be mowed. It's going to be a whole, whole big lawn. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So to speak. Okay. Yeah. Well, yeah. Yeah. Do the the other. And I guess it's good. You say it's going to be open. There's not going to be any shade of any other sort. Right. Okay. Because because that's the other competition. I mean, they'll, they'll all grow crooked if there's trees on the yeah. adjacent yeah. property. Mm -hmm. I have to look, but yeah. What That's about just, I mean, my experience is to What about the oh, oaks? You know, the birches? The birches? They probably they'll, they'll they'll stay there until until the time. It, until the, the oaks get large enough that there would be any interference, and then they'd be they'd be taken out. So is this an action item? Uh, this is a, a, a for thinking item at the moment. Uh, we have plans of having the the ground. Um, leveled. <laughs> you mean, right? When I get to No. You mean take out all the existing yeah. vegetation when you say leveled, or you mean grading earth? Yeah, grading earth. Yeah, you just flatten it off, maybe. Mm -hmm. It's got some little bumps in it now. Yeah. So anyway, that's, that's an idea. I, I, I would recommend just drawing it all up to scale so that you really, you know, how wide these roads and grave sites and Oh, well, that's really so like all of that. I have to go to my, get my surveyor's license first. As soon as I, get oh, I can help with that if you want. <laughs> uh, You'll lose your willow tree, won't you? Yeah. Well, the willow that's won't okay. last forever. Right. Anyway. Yeah. Right. Um, you're going to be busy painting shovels, as I recall. <laughs> when the shovels show up, I guess. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yes, that was another volunteer item. I'm, I'm, that's less imminent than this. <laughs> not to scale either. Now, I'm, I'm going back to the firehouse real quick. And this is an idea that I had um, went during our last uh, during our last conference call. If you all remember that we moved the, the sleeping area from down here in the building to up here in the building, but proportionally it didn't it didn't change 100% swap. Um, what was it what was in the past there was an electrical room and a water room here which are now up here. And then there was a there was a, a fitness room here, here would take, and then there was the sleeping quarters, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. Well, now with the new plan, the sleeping room's up here, and the, there's a department office down here, but the, the fitness room is now like this big. And then and then there's turnout gear, there's a corridor, there's some turnout gear, and then there's the water. Mm -hmm. Oh, and then there's the sleeping rooms. And it, 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 as I say, it's not to scale, except for the, the fitness room is substantially larger, and I don't have the square feet, and I'm going to hopefully to get it tomorrow. Uh, the old fitness room was, was it 350 square feet? The old one was four something, four something, and this new one is 602, which is just about the same size as the current one. Mm -hmm. So where did the 200 feet come from? Uh, moving it around. I mean, there was... A lot of hallway or something? No, and they had it small, and then we pointed out that it was too small, and then they combined the water and electric rooms. And oh, they, they were increased too it. generous. And then when they flipped everything, it ended up somehow. <laughs> yeah, that's magic, though. <laughs> anyway, I had this crazy idea that since it's a little bit bigger than we need it to be for a permanent, you know, for a permanent fire fire station where you where you where you have five people in the station at any one time. Um, you know, fitness rooms are only generally spec'd out for two to three 
people to be using them. We'll have to talk tomorrow about what the normal uh, fire station is designed, what fitness room is designed for, and we can adjust accordingly. But there's a door, ooh, there's a corridor here, and there's a door in the fitness room there. There's another one there's yeah. a door down here. That's the IT room. Yeah. And one that goes. Uh, Mark, Mark and I can't see most of what you're doing. X marks the door. And there's another door somewhere. So, anyway, I, I was thinking that, and this is the day room over here. And I was thinking about putting a door over here from the day room and then just, just knocking off a few feet of space here, maybe, I don't know, maybe eight. I don't know. What it would be, but to have a, a game room, a game room, a game room for the employees where they could wait. It would be a separate space where they could have a big monitoring, a big well, not an anti fitness room. Yeah, anti fitness room. A monitor here, you know, some chairs, maybe a little sofa, something, and they could go in and they could, you know, uh, work off a little steam, play the visual reality stuff that they like to do. You know, the the, the you know drive drive out. A virtual reality fire truck to the fire, <laughs> you know, run the hose on. That's you know. how you relax after a run, right? Yeah, and it would be, I'm sure it would be beneficial for, you know, for training and things like that. And, it, and then we move the door, yeah, you know, to the day room so they could go in from the day room instead of having to walk all the way around to the bottom. Anyway, but, you know. Oh, Alice wants a study? Well, we had actually talked about that early on in the process was having a, a study room. A lot of fire stations have an area where the guys can go. It's a quiet area. Oh, when you have classes and they can. Well, actually. even when they're, I mean, because we always have people in the MT class or yeah, paramedic class, class here, study. a place where they can study, and it's stuff to do in the day room where people are watching TV and cooking and all that kind of stuff. So what we thought is getting rid of those walls and a door. So we save the door. And hold the door. Uh, and you put a couple couches in there, and it becomes a study room or study nook, because then it's open on one side. Um, do people now study on the couch? <laughs> oh yeah, they study in here, and they study, you know, all, I mean, there's always someone doing something. Where do they can sit? <clears throat> um, so that's just an idea. And it gets rid of the door, and a wall, actually two walls. And we know the walls are expensive, apparently. So it's in the locker room? Well, it removes part of that hallway, oh wait, I've got six masks in front of me. Uh, we'd have to figure out what to do with those lockers, but I thought we were going to, like, not full-size lockers, but they were like... Because these are like the lockers for the guys, not the turnout gear stuff. Mm -hmm. Right, uh, that's the personal... Here. Yeah, just, you know, your place to lock up your... Right, whatever. Your study materials. Yeah, well, you're like, um, you know, like toiletries bag and that kind of stuff, too. I mean, that, that type of thing. Um, so I get toward a door and some walls, we have to figure out where those lockers could go, but that's why we pay the architects theory. Okay, let's, maybe we talk so, about that a little bit. Yeah, see what Dano has to say, but not you. <laughs> oh, you can have something to say, too. <laughs> okay. Not planning to do any studying in the new building? Oh. <laughs> <laughs> but I will be, I guess. Yeah. <laughs> maybe you'd have to uh, uh, check. Check with the staff and see if they'd rather study or play VR. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> okay, that's all I have. Long winded enough. That's perfect. Anything else for a new firehouse? Yeah. Oh, that's right. Yeah. We did a new firehouse. Yeah. Anything, yeah. Else? Yeah. Anything else for cemetery? <laughs> all right, how about road? 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 Well, maybe next week we'll be able to do some wedging. Yeah. You heard the chip seals happen? It's going to be, well, they first said in June, but it's probably always spring, always spring. They're there, how it's true. The end of June is kind of behind us. <laughs> the weather is all about Yeah. But we'll be ready for it. Okay. So, how much time do we usually like between a wedge and a. Uh, well, they might like have a couple of months, but if I can get about three weeks or a month, yeah. it'll stick to it. You know, put it down fresh, they come in next week. That's for the issue. You know, get some dry weather, it helps set the top off, cure it off a little bit. And we'll roll it down hard every fall. Yeah. So that's the plan. You getting some roads done? Trim A little bit. We'll draw. And the uh, truck will be 
ready for the trade? Because I'm assuming you want to use the first trade. Um, traders. Do we want to use? This is the same for the Cadillac. Let's go. Over the back. I don't know. <laughs> it's really hot. It's steel bed. Uh, uh, no, I don't. Okay. I'm afraid. Are you going to be in prey, Tom? Mm -hmm. Okay. Go for it. Behind out of my ear. <laughs> we got left behind the bride parade, so. Uh, so left behind? You had to you had your they left early. Or something. They left early. It was really strange. Oh, really? Yeah. <laughs> Very old friends. <laughs> early. Early. Yeah, we're sitting there like late. We were supposed to bring up the rear of the parade. Yeah. All these people are waiting to jump in because whatever. And I called Chief Carlson and I'm like, hey, where are you? What's going on? He's like, apparently I'm leaving the parade. I'm like, it started? He's like, yeah, we're, we're turning on a quarry now. And the crowd was like, what? And so, yeah. Well, the parade had a big gap in the middle of it, too, which made it was confusing. <laughs> yeah, it was interesting. So. But this time it's for real. But yeah, well, <laughs> this stuff is strange. Um, At least we're familiar with this one. You know, I'm never close enough to the to, to, to your equipment to see what you guys are doing. Do you want to take the crush truck and spray the crowd? <laughs> we have in the past. Can you get the velocity down low enough? Oh, yeah. Yeah. It was controversial one year because... Um, Yeah, we just don't like to have fun. Um, one guy thought the team was, used to do a pretty yeah, good job. Yeah, one guy said his phone got soaked, and then we were spraying dirty, disgusting water, and I was like, "Oh, this what's coming out of your water system?" Um, so what we did last year or two years ago is we went, we flushed the tank out, and we filled it from the hydrant at the water tower, so it was the cleanest Yellow Springs water you could ever have. And then I don't think we had enough people to actually take the brush work last year. <laughs> but this year it's going to be really hot, so I think yeah. we'll do it again. So. Okay. It's fun. The kids love it. Yeah. And they're all like, ooh. So uh, maybe we'll just put out a public notice. How about, Please don't, how about uh, don't spray on Herman Street, on the south side of Herman Street, as you, as you go. Like <laughs> <laughs> yeah, all, all the, <laughs> the residents. Yeah. yeah. See them all knock back. It's, <laughs> it's also, we have, to, we have to appropriately select the right person to do the spraying right. too, so uh, they're, yeah. not they're not targeting you there. there. <laughs> and yeah, you can get a little. Spray? Well, that was also a comment that came up that it was, you know, the more triggering for oh. people who may have had to live through some civil rights era things. Wow. With firemen and hoses. Mm -hmm. And, uh, you know, it might be, but. I'm Leave not, the German Shepherds at home. Yeah, you? I'm not a big believer in trigger warnings. Uh, maybe maybe parade trigger things, too. Okay. The whole world is a trigger, basically, yeah. for somebody. So, um, so yeah, hopefully we can do that, but we'll see. No, you spray more in an arc. Okay. Right, yeah, and you put on a wider phone, uh, fog pattern. So. Yeah. Kids like it. I'm sure they do. I think they're children. Like and it's the kids that have the parade for the kids. Anything else for the road? <laughs> I don't know. Anything else for the road? From the road? <laughs> to the road? <laughs> How about one for the road? <laughs> How about the fist bumps? I have a resolution. Amending permit don't appropriate. You <laughs> Already? Well, we've ripped the fire department. We've been halfway through the year. Repairs and maintenance. Oh, okay? I see. We had an appropriate yeah. bunch of money and we're it's, it's, all, this is, this is and we're halfway through the year. The we should be getting some money back, too, from insurance. So. Okay, well, still. Yeah. Yeah, so I just went that. ahead and beefed up that line item again, which is Resolution 2019-22, Amendment of Permanent Appropriations, whereas it is an ongoing process to accurately appropriate funds according to the needs of the township. Now, therefore, the trustees authorize amendment to the following permanent appropriations, which is in fire fund, repairs, and maintenance. I increased it by $10,000. We don't have to spend it all, but at the rate things have been going, there you go. Anybody? <laughs> so the move of adoption of 2019-22 of this resolution. Thank you. 2019 There's a motion and a second. Here's the discussion regarding that resolution. Hearing that, may we vote, please. Mr. Crockett? Yes. Mr. Mutcher? Yes. Mr. Hollister? Yes. Uh, I don't have anything else really. I 
waiting to hear back from um, the state auditor's office to get a, to get audited because I want to be audited every year now. Because well, I have to. So anyway, doesn't matter. Oh right, for the. I, I want to clarify. Oh, because of the building. Oh right. Yeah. Yes, Don. On contingencies mm -hmm. in the miscellaneous capital projects. Mm -hmm. uh, the only thing I can say is that in the computer system, when you set up a new fund, it gives you all kinds of options. Of, you know, like different. You can see all the other funds. We have the different expenditure lines, right? Um, it could be, you know, all different kinds of things. But in the capital fund. And in the computer, the only option I had to use as a you know, expenditure line item was contingencies. It didn't say, there was one that says paying back the loan, you know, or it, there wasn't anything like that. It just, I mean, I can show you what's available on the computer, but that's the only thing that was available that I could find. To label the line. But we don't. Yeah, to label that, to label that. But this is kind of an open-ended line item. It's not a specific expenditure. It is everything that we are, it's, it is directly related to any monies we spend on building the new fire station with the loan money, the USDA loan money. That's, that, that's, all, that's, that's the only thing, you know, that's the only revenue that that capital fund receives besides money from the property tax, you know, levy uh, uh, to, well, to repay the that, loan. That's enough of an answer for me. Okay. I guess. Yes. I felt reluctant to sign a regular blanket certificate for no, I, I you know, a, a handful of things, and here it's one category. Okay, yeah. thank you. Yeah, sure. Um, yeah, I'm Do you want to talk about the firehouse some more? <laughs> want to. Do you have any good ideas? Mm -hmm. <laughs> Yeah, but I guess I guess it, it, being the fiscal officer, I, I did go on this canoe trip with the um, former governor Taft's wife, and that's where this um, resolution has bubbled up to the surface, which I thought was pretty pretty nice actually. Guys, but we can do that in business. Okay. Um, you want to see the rest of your time to the zoning inspector? <laughs> okay, no, <laughs> I'm done. Okay. Zoning inspector. Um, the day to day has been fairly quiet. Uh, two things perhaps of significance to report to you. One is there was a, uh, a court case in Montgomery County concerning agritourism. And mm -hmm. um, there's two, two things about it. One, it was basically, the, there, this was in, I think this was actually in Miami Township in Montgomery yeah. County. Mm -hmm. um, the, uh, I guess the zoning inspector had said to the, the property owner, you're not doing what you said you were doing, and he disagreed, so it went to the Board of Zoning Appeals, and they agreed with their zoning inspector, so he went to court with it, and the court said the Board of Zoning Appeals did everything that they were supposed to do the way they were supposed to do it. And that's what it brought up. So he didn't actually rule on whether their proposed wedding barn or whatever it was, it was an agritourism legitimate activity, but the, the, the process that the zoning regulations had gone through were, was legitimate. Mm -hmm. Anyway, it, it's one of the first times that something related to agritourism has actually gone through a court and, and, and been completed. So that was of note and that has been distributed around, around Greene County, although what happens in Montgomery County, it isn't like it's case law, and it, it you know it affects us uh, at, at that level. If the same thing happened and our judge ruled a different way, our judge could rule. Mm -hmm. so that's that's going on. The other is the um, zoning commission at their um, June meeting decided that they were going to review. Uh, they're, they're thinking about, about um, plan unit development and put together at their next meeting a presentation to bring to you all. So that's in the works. Um, but they, after some discussions, still didn't feel that PUD was, was appropriate 
that, that chapter for Miami Township. Um, and so they, I think they want to present their reasons of why they think it's inappropriate and then, you know, start a discussion because they can't figure out what would be appropriate, you know, in, in terms of trying to rewrite the chapter or, or you know, make it better um, than, it, than it currently is. So anyway, that's, that's happening. If you get a, a definite time or date, I guess, when that's happening, let yeah, well, up, yeah. I'll let you time. all know when they're planning to come to a, yeah, a meeting. Because I'm going to have Devin Shoemaker come and you know throw in his two cents worth. Yeah, as I say, they they are trying to share their thinking with you, mm -hmm. and and obviously you see Don attended a meeting and, and gave his his two cents on the matter. But um, you know they're reacting to what we have mm -hmm. and looking at our, the work we've done in the past, our comprehensive plan or whatever, and, and say, well, these don't mesh. Mm -hmm. And so what would mesh is, is an interesting concept. If somebody comes up with something, I mean, we've, they've looked at other people's PUDs and they're not that different from ours. Mm -hmm. So um, well, that's where fellow. that stands. You might be able to yeah, have he, some insight. Yeah, and that's, so, uh, so these would be that, but they're, they're the third Tuesday of the month, which means they're, you know, they, the earliest they could come back to you would be at the beginning of August <laughs> meeting. But I'll know at that meeting what their, their plans are. Okay. Well, you're great. Or I can say to them, well, they, <laughs> the trustees want some warning and some planning, so maybe they would plan for the second meeting in August. <laughs> we'll see. What, what all the other schedules are for the farmers and everybody else. All right, anything else? Okay, anything else for the zoning inspector? No. Uh, all right, let's move to uh, new business. And apparently our one item of new business is a potential resolution. Um, did somebody write Miami Township on this? Yes, I did. Difficult for me to scan this. In I've got a copy of it. Oh, you do? Okay, cool. I'm sorry. That's I right. thought I was going to make it easier for you to read it. <laughs> <laughs> okay, uh, I'll, I'll, I'll go over here. Um, I have a draft resolution which would be 22 or 20, uh, 1923. Is that right? Yes. Okay. Thank you. Resolution. <laughs> yeah. okay. Resolution administrator. Yeah. Um, and it reads, whereas on February 28, 1968, Ohio became a pioneer conservation movement with the passage of the Ohio Scenic Rivers Act, the first Scenic Rivers Act in the nation which created a program to preserve and protect rivers throughout the state of Ohio, and whereas Ohio has approximately 60,000 miles of rivers and streams with parts of 15 of them designated as being wild, scenic, or recreational rivers, and whereas the Little Miami River was the first river in Ohio, to gain the status as a state and national scenic river and the only one whose entire 107 yeah, yeah, yeah. It's all miles is a declared a scenic river and whereas Miami Township is situated near the Little Miami River and is vital to the health of the river and whereas near it, it's in it. The, yeah, whereas the Little Miami River and its tributaries provide tourist, recreational, economic and health benefits to the people of the region and whereas locally um, the Little Miami Watershed Network, the Little Miami River Cleaners, are we other local groups or Miami Township? And Miami Township. And Miami Township are, are dedicated to the restoration and protection of the river and streams and wetlands in the Little Miami River's watershed. And whereas the 50th anniversary of the Little Miami River obtaining Ohio Scenic River statute status, excuse me, provides an opportunity to reflect on the progress that's been made to protect <coughs> the state's longest designated river and chance to reaffirm. Miami Township's commitment to the preservation and protection of Ohio natural resources. Now, therefore, be it resolved that Miami Township recognizes the 50th anniversary of the Little Miami River, obtaining Ohio Scenic River designation, and encourages all in, I guess that's another Miami, Miami Township, there we go, <laughs> to enjoy, experience, <laughs> preserve, and protect the Little Miami State and National River. Whew. Is there a motion to adopt draft resolution 2019-23? Mm -hmm. Mr. Hollis seconds. And Mr. Hollis was seconds. Is there any further discussion regarding that draft resolution adoption? Hearing none, may we vote please. Mr. Crockett? 
Yes. Mr. Hollister? Yes. Mr. Meacher? Yes. Do you so, think that we should um, specify that we are the Miami Township in Green County? Most probably. Well, the Miami Township that has the little Miami River in it. Well, but I mean, you know, there's the Montgomery County, Miami Township, there's Miami Township. Well, there's five Miami Townships. Yeah, so I mean, I mean, maybe you can write real, I've got, like I said, I got another copy, it would be right small there. Yeah, I think I'm going to scan it into Word and then just... And fix it. Yeah. The gist of that is we're recognizing the 50th anniversary of the declaration. Yeah. It doesn't really matter. All the rest of that doesn't make much difference. And of course, this was last year. The 50th anniversary was last year. Oh, it was always last year, right? Yeah. So why are we recognizing that? Because we're just not getting around. Just get around. Is there, any further, is there any further new business this evening? I don't have any. Gentlemen? Any old business this evening? I thought you said there was some other piece of new business when you were going through correspondence. Was that it? That's that was it. it. And then Margaret business. had the same thing. Okay. Mm -hmm. yeah. uh, no new business? No, or no further new business? No. New old business? Our next meeting will be July 15, 2019. Hope everyone enjoys the fireworks. Hope that everyone is safe. On Thursday, is it Thursday? Yeah, mm -hmm. Thursday. yeah Thursday is the fourth. Yeah. 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 Well, we do have a rain date on Friday since it makes sense to have one on the next day when it's at the end of the week. We're not canceling unless it's a type of It does yeah. make sense. <laughs> no, but, but it's interesting. The guys that, that shoot off the fireworks can do it in, in any weather. It's the uh, observers that they do. Yeah, it can't be one way to say. Well, I didn't want to interrupt the inspectors off, but I would say we're adjourned. Yeah. yeah. Oh. Okay. <laughs>